Hi everyone, I am Naufal and I work as a software engineer at Nutanix. Hello everyone, my name is Rohit Givdonde and I also work as a software engineer at Nutanix. Today we'll be talking about how we can leverage Themen for better caching. We have other people as well who are working on this project, Niranjan, Alok and Gaurav. All of us work at Nutanix. So let's start with the presentation. This is the agenda for the talk. First, we will have an introduction about persistent memory, then different persistent memory modes for volatile use case and comparison. After that, Rohit will talk about how we are going to use persistent memory in Nutanix HCI stack, then performance results and future work. Introduction to persistent memory. Persistent memory is a new type of device. In computer memory hierarchy, it is coming between DRAM and SSD. Similar to DRAM, it is byte addressable and cache coherent. It is 3x slower than DRAM, but still the access latency is in nanoseconds. Additionally, it has high density. That means in a single server node, we can have more capacity device. It is 3x cheaper than DRAM. Similar to SSD, it is persistent. Additionally, it is 100x faster than NVMe SSD and it has better endurance. Persistent memory device is coming in different form factor. One such example is Intel Optane SSD, which can be connected to PCIe slot. For our use case, we need persistent memory as a memory device. So that for that, it is a different form factor that will be connected to memory controller directly. The advantage is that CPU can directly access persistent memory using load and store instruction. So there is no overhead of PCIe or NVMe protocol. That's about introduction. Now let's go through persistent memory modes for volatile use case. Mainly there are three volatile modes. One is memory mode. Second one is AppDirect FSDAX mode with memkind library. And third one is AppDirect KMMDAX mode. Now let's talk about first option that is memory mode and let's see how it is different from app direct mode. Memory mode is a BIOS level setting. It is completely transparent to operating system or applications. As shown in the left side of the diagram, let's say we have a system with 512 GB DRAM and the 2048 GB persistent memory. If we con configure the system in memory mode, the DRAM will act, the DRAM will be act as a L4 cache. And the main memory capacity will be equivalent to whatever the persistent memory capacity, that is 2048 GB in this case. So effectively, we are losing DRAM capacity from the system memory says. One other drawback is that in this case, programmer doesn't have any control on where to place where to place in-memory data. It can be in DRAM or persistent memory. So performance will be unpredictable. Now let's see what is in AppDirect KMMDAX mode. So in AppDirect case, as shown in the diagram, right side of the diagram, main memory size will be equal to sum of DRAM capacity and persistent memory capacity. So here in this case, we are not losing DRAM capacity. This will be transparent to programmer, but if required, programmer can choose the memory type while doing the memory allocation. Let's look into the second PMM volatile mode option that is FSDAX with mem memkind. Once a PMM device is configured with FSDAX, operating system will expose it as a block device. After that, we have to lay out a PMM aware file system on top of this. EXT4 is one example for PMM aware file system. While mounting this device, we also need to pass a special flag called DAX. It stands for direct access. It inform kernel that this is a directly accessible device. It doesn't require any kernel page cache in between. Whenever an application want to use persistent memory, it has to include memkind library as part of it. 
Memcand is a wrapper around JE malloc. JE malloc is an open source memory allocator. Internally, Memcand will allocate a temp Memcand will create a temporary file on top of VMware file system and it will, do the, it will do the memory mapping. So whenever an application requests for memory, Memcand will first try to satisfy, satisfy that request from already allocated memory. If not, it will extend the already allocated, already created file and do the memory map again and return the memory back to application. So this file extension is an expensive operation. This involves ext for metadata update. So in summary, in FS DAX mode, memory allocation can be an expensive operation. So now let's look into the right side of the diagram. That is memory access. That means read or write into the persistent memory device. So memory is already allocated. We are writing to that device. So in this case, since we already enabled the direct access flag, there is no kernel page cache involved. So mm -hmm. that write will directly go to NVDM device. It is just like a DRAM, writing to a DRAM. So also since the memory address, memory is already allocated, there is no ext4 update anymore. So in summary, in FS DAX mode, memory access is similar to DRAM. Only difference is that the device is different. So there'll be a latency associated with the device type. Now let's look into third option for even volatile use that is app direct came in DAX mode. In this mode, operating system will hot plug payment device as a memory only new manual. As shown in the diagram, there is a socket called socket zero. This is a physical socket with the CPU, DRAM, and PMM. Corresponding to this socket, there will be a new node created in kernel, that is new node zero, and it will have compute and memory. Once we configure KMM DAX, operating system will create a virtual new node, new node one, that is corresponding to PMM device. It will not have any compute associated. That's why it is memory only new node. So for a user, the total system size will be system memory size will be equivalent to sum of PMM memory size and the DRAM memory size. As we can see, there is no file system involved. So the memory allocation and memory access is similar to how we access from DRAM. This will be transparent to application. Transparent to application, there is there doesn't require any code change. But if an application want to make advantage of performance difference between DRAM and PMM. There is two options. One is using memcain library, other one is using Numa binding. So for example, in this case, address one is coming from malloc, normal uh, libc malloc. So in this case, the memory can be from either DRAM or PMEM. So in address two, we are using memcain library API called memcain underscore malloc. And here we are passing memory type. Memcain, memcain underscore regularly stands for DRAM. So in this case, address two will be memory will be coming from DRAM only. So in address three, memkind underscore malloc, we are specifying memkind underscore DAX underscore camel. So this means uh, this memory will be coming from PMM device. So this is one way using memkind library we can choose from where we want the memory. So also in a process level, we can do numa binding to control from where the memory allocation is coming from. After considering all three PMM volatile mode options, we decided to go with FS DAX for our volatile use case. The reason is that in memory mode, we will lose the DRAM capacity and the performance will be unpredictable. In KMM DAX mode, we need to have a special handling to restrict other processes from consuming persistent memory. This is because once we enable KMM DAX, even the normal DBC malloc call, it can get memory from persistent memory device. So it can create performance issues in the existing applications. Also, this KMM DAX feature came recently only. It is there from Linux 5.1. So we are still exploring this one. In the FS DAX mode, there is a drawback that is memory allocation can be expensive. But in our use case, in our applications, memory allocation is not that frequent compared to memory access. So considering this, for now we decided to go with FS DAX mode. Let's look into the performance difference between DRAM and FS DAX. We wrote a custom tool. It will, will pre-allocate memory from both DRAM and persistent memory. 
After that, it will do both read and write to the both the devices. What we are seeing is that in case of read, we are seeing around 3x difference between persistent memory and DRAM. Persistent memory is 3x lower than DRAM. In case of write, we are seeing a 6 to 10x difference between PMM and DRAM. PMM is 6 to 10x lower than DRAM. So this matches with the general PMM performance characteristics. So this also tells that FSDAX and MemKind is not adding any additional overhead on read write PMM read write path. So even though there is a performance difference between DRAM and persistent memory, in coming slides, Rohit will show uh, how we are making use of persistent memory in our Nutanix SCS stack and how we are getting performance advantage with that. Thanks, Nofil. Now let's look at a use case for PMM in the Nutanix HCI environment. Here we use PMM for our metadata cache in the Nutanix distributed file system. Let's understand what metadata cache is in the NDFS. Briefly talking about the architecture, this diagram shows where the metadata cache fits in the system. A user VM sends an IO request, which is then forwarded to the controller VM. The CVM is where the Nutanix software runs. Within CVM, Stargate is the service which takes care of handling the IO request. Now the Stargate talks to Medusa, which is the abstraction layer that sits in front of the backend store. The Medusa first checks the metadata cache to see if we have the metadata there. Otherwise, it then goes to the Cassandra, which is much slower as compared to the metadata cache. So this metadata cache is very critical to the read performance. And once the target has the metadata, it knows where the data is and can likewise handle the IO request. Now this metadata cache is present in the CVM's main memory. And it takes up a large portion of the CVM's memory, which can go to half of what CVM gets. So if you use PMEM for our metadata cache, the DRAM, which was originally held, can be used for other latency sensitive purposes. So what is the motivation for us to use PMEM for our metadata cache? Now, the cache misses are very expensive because every time there is a miss, we end up going to the backend, which is much slower. And hence, the read performance gets badly affected. Therefore, to improve the read performance, the aim is to maximize the hits from this cache. Now, to achieve this, we can we need to increase the effective cache capacity. So by effective, uh, here I mean we should be able to fit more and more entries in the cache. So there can be two approaches to increase the effective cache capacity. One is to decrease the memory needed by each cache entry so that in the available cache space, we can accommodate more and more entries. However, there is only so much that can be done to reduce the memory footprint of the cache entries. Therefore, we focus on the second approach, which is to actually increase the cache size available. Now, the second approach would mean giving more DRAM to the cache, but this is not actually feasible since DRAM is very expensive. Instead, we use PMM because PMM is much cheaper than DRAM, almost three times cheaper. Moreover, we get acceptable latencies with PMM as compared to DRAM. Therefore, it makes sense to use PMM for caching. Now, there can be various approaches on how we use PMM for caching. One of the simplest and the most intuitive is to place the entire cache on PMM. So that is what we do here. We place our metadata cache on PMM and maintain the cache index on DRAM. Now, this cache index is very small as compared to the total cache size. For multiple GBs of cache, we have a few MBs of the cache index. This index, index includes hash table, buckets, keys, and various other data structures that we need to locate the cache values. Now, the primary reason to maintain this index on DRAM is to prevent increasing the latency for misses. But yeah, we can maintain this index also on DRAM. 
but since it's very small uh, we chose to maintain it on dynamic itself on premium we maintain the cash values which take up the majority portion of the cash size so as you can see here we have effectively increased our metadata cache size since we have a much larger premium than dnm and we do expect to see some performance degradation for small read working sets because these working sets can fit completely in the dram cache and dram cache of same size as premium cache will give will any time give better performance however for large working sets where dram cache is not sufficient and we get misses in dram cache a larger premium cache would give more benefit because we'll be able to have more entries in the premium cache and hence better hits so these are the performance numbers when we compare the metadata cache on premium versus the metadata cache on dram here we do an end to end run on our nutanix stack so you can see the hardware configurations here we use a random read workload suppose we have a dram of size 12.5 gb now considering the cost factor we can have premium of size nearly 34 gb so these are the maximum memories that are available for our metadata cache now looking at the first chart we have relative iops plotted the plots in blue are the dram cache which has a maximum size of 12.5 gb and the orange is for premium cache which has a maximum size of 34 gb now this percentages over premium plots are the improvements that we get with respect to the dram cache for that particular working set now for a small working set of 5.3 db a cache size of 12.5 gb is sufficient so we have 100% hit rates here in both the cases hence dram cache performs better and we have a degradation of nearly 4% with premium however as we keep on increasing the working set size 12.5 gb of cache is not sufficient and hence dram cache performance keeps on decreasing because in the dram cache we get cache misses however for premium having larger cache size we are able to accommodate all the cache entries in premium and we get 100% hits a similar pattern can be observed in the hit rates plot we have 100% hit rates for both the scenarios for small working set however as the working set keeps on increasing the hit rates for the dram cache keeps on reducing because dram is only 12.5 gb whereas premium is 34 gb and sufficient enough to accommodate all the cache entries so here we can see how much benefit we are getting by keeping our metadata cache on premium So that was one approach on using pmem there can be several other uh, other approaches one of them is to use tiered caching so here we maintain hot cache entries on dram and we spill the uh, we spill the cold entries to pmem so whenever there is an eviction from dram we spill that entry to pmem and the spilling happens in the background so that we don't block the foreground threads therefore we get best of both worlds we get dram like performance for small working sets read working sets and added premium benefit for large read working sets another approach can be to persist the cache entries on premium here we don't have to rebuild the cache across service restarts and hence our cache does not waste time warming up in the beginning so these are the various approaches that we can use to enable caching on premium so that was our take on how we can use premium for better caching please feel free to ask any questions that you may have and you can also reach out to us on the following mail ids thank you